Your body is not who you are. You shed it like a snake sheds its skin. I can barely walk at first. You'll have to pull him out. I'm gonna get this shit all over me. You'll get used to it. Just to can him. We got four more to do in the next hour. All right, buddy, enough of that. Oh, shit! Give me a mirror. There are no mirrors here. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained. I've been receiving a lot of requests to cover the sci-fi Netflix series, Altered Carbon, and thought that we could begin our exploration by taking a look at the cortical stacks and the process of Reese leaving that allowed people to extend their lifespans as featured in the show. Adapted from the novel of the same name by Richard K. Morgan, Altered Carbon depicts a Blade Runner-esque cyberpunk future in which people had the ability to download their consciousness into new bodies referred to as sleeves through the use of cybernetic implants known as cortical stacks. The series follows Takeshi Kovacs, a former super soldier who wakes up 250 years after the destruction of his sleeve and is offered the choice of either spending the rest of his life in prison for past crimes or serving out his sentence as a private eye working to solve the murder of the wealthiest man in the world. The cortical stacks were essentially tiny cyberware data storage units that were protected within a synth diamond case about the size of a grape which were implanted at the base of people's skulls where the brain stem and spinal cord connected. Once activated, they would begin making a digital backup of a person's ego, which through psychoanalytic terms just means the part of the mind that mediates between the conscious and the unconscious, which was responsible for reality shaping and acquiring a sense of personal identity. Composed of non-terrestrial metals which were left by an alien civilization, along with the astrogation charts that mapped out several habitable worlds within the galaxy, the unique materials along with advances in human technologies made digital human freights a reality. This technology was also originally developed as a means of interstellar travel to reach the habitable planets that were mentioned earlier and would have otherwise taken centuries to get to through traditional travel methods. By downloading the human consciousness, they were in essence able to transmit consciousness from one planet to another into a waiting sleeve in an instantaneous form of transfer that was called needle casting. Part Nanoware, the implant maintained a network of nanobots that monitored synaptic connections and brain architecture, noting any changes and updating the ego backup in real time. With no inbuilt wireless access capabilities, stacks had to be surgically removed from corpses in a process known as popping, where a skilled extractor would get the implant to literally pop out by making a small cut in the correct place and applying pressure. Cortical stacks could be removed from living people, but the process was usually fatal, or at least would cause paralysis as it involved cutting through the spinal column. Once the use of cortical stacks became a ubiquitous part of the human condition, human bodies were considered nothing more than sleeves for the human consciousness. Over time, sleeving became a method for extending life indefinitely for those who could afford it, with the wealthiest people making sleeves that were genetic replicas of themselves, while the poor had no choice and were often forced into sleeves that were not age or health appropriate. We get a brief glimpse of this in the show, with a family who had lost their daughter to a car accident and under the legal precedent of victim restitution, were provided with an unsuitable sleeve, forcing their young daughter into the body of an elderly woman. What have you done to our daughter? Cindy's seven years old. You get whatever's in inventory. She was murdered in a hit and run. The law says she gets a free sleeve. And that one's free. If you don't like it, pay for an upgrade, put her back in storage. Daddy, please don't put me back in the dark again. <laughs> I think it's important to note that the cost of a single clone sleeve was more than what the average citizen would make in a year, highlighting the fact that wealth inequality was just as much an issue in the future as it was in the past. Because of the nominal ability to revive anyone who died, so long as the cortical stack remained intact, sleeve death was legally changed from a crime of murder to mere property damage, and it was only when the cortical stacks were destroyed in a process known as slagging that the perpetrator would face murder charges. Unfortunately, this encouraged the wealthy elites to sadistically destroy the sleeves of poor people who willingly agreed to this act in return for money. If an individual had died in violent circumstances, they would often experience intense psychological trauma after being placed in a foreign sleeve. 
This trauma varied depending on how foreign the sleeve was to that of the previous vessel, with drastic changes in age, race, and gender causing more lasting shock. And it was because of this that all sleeving facilities were equipped with highly trained therapists and psychologists on hand to assist with these transitions. With that in mind, there were unique mental conditioning techniques that allowed a person to drastically reduce this shock, as seen with the Envoys, which were a group of elite super soldiers that were trained to withstand the psychological trauma that came with frequent resleeving. Within the world of Altered Carbon, there also existed an expensive service known as Remote DHF Backup, which held and updated a duplicate of a client's consciousness in a separate remote cortical stack that was often secured in a vault. This added an extra layer of protection for the wealthy, ensuring that even if their cortical stack was destroyed, they still had a backup in a secure location with all their memories leading up to the most recent update. Have you ever heard of full spectrum DHF remote storage backup? Yeah. Just never met anyone filthy rich enough to afford it. Interestingly, this also granted people the ability to place their duplicated consciousness into the sleeve of an additional body, in a process that was called double sleeving, though the practice was illegal and punishable by death. You live against the truth of the universe, you know. Uh, if you have a family, you're aware that your children will someday die, but you don't treat them as dead, you treat them as living creatures that you have to nurture. And I think the same is true of your own life, that you you're aware it's finite, you're aware that you'll only have a certain amount of time, but we don't live with it because it's not in the way we're wired to live with that. Another great addition to the roster of new content developed by Netflix, I highly recommend Altered Carbon to fans of the sci-fi genre that appreciate the works of Richard K. Morgan and the likes of Philip K. Dick. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at Altered Carbon. If there's any other stuff you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Here's a full pardon, signed by the President of the Protectorate. Now, if you agree to my terms, your sentence will be reduced to time served. And then I will open a very generous line of credit in your name. All I ask of you is that you solve a murder. Whose? Mine.